Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Inclusive Storytelling Podcast. I am your host, Ashwini Prasad, and today I'm with Serena. Serena, welcome. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Ashwini, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, thank you so much for being here. So, Serena, I do this with all my guests. You are your expert. So tell us more about you and everything that you do. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> so I am an actress, writer, and recently, as of the last year, I started a casting agency. So now I guess I can call myself a casting director focused on diverse talent. So I've built a database of very diverse talent. My focus uh, is on Muslim talent because I am originally a Muslim. Uh, and so I really wanted to kind of shed light on how you know negatively stereotyped we've been over the years and just say hey we do exist we are creative in this space and so over the last year we've we've done some really cool uh really cool things with some really great projects I'm excited to to talk more about that yeah and I'll definitely give you space to let everybody know how to get a hold of you as we end um and your company right Muslim casting um is absolutely phenomenal uh how many you know art news articles have there been about you and <laughs> the company it's absolutely fabulous thank you thank you yeah I'm thank thankfully we've um we've been able to just hit the ground running and honestly when I started this I didn't even think that there would be a, a market for it. Um, but filmmakers have just been kind of coming out of the woodwork asking for diverse talent. And that just, that really, really warms my heart because that means more diverse stories are being told. Um, and that's super exciting because um, now that there's nuance and layers and hopefully um, more interesting stories to be told, uh, not just about our community, but all kinds of different communities. So really excited to see to see what comes up yeah and it's so interesting you know the connections between like the south asian community and the hindus and the muslim communities aside from the strife there is a lot of great history among these communities and what was interesting is like i was just talking with some folks earlier you'll see like a depiction of an iraqi or an afghani and they're speaking hindi and mm -hmm. I even was talking to an actor and uh, he was talking about how now, and other people have said this to me as well, as talent, they're not going for those stereotypical uh, terrorist roles, which unfortunately are in abundance. And like literally that's all they're being um, pushed, uh, put towards by their agents. But now they're saying no to it, which I love. And yeah. what I notice as a viewer, I'm like, okay, wait, this person is supposed to be speaking Farsi. Why are they speaking Hindi? And my friend who's an actor was like, uh, basically a director said to him, our producer said, oh, don't worry, speak, speak Hindi, no one will notice. And I was oh, like, no, no. right? <laughs> no. We'll notice, no. we'll notice. <laughs> exactly, we will absolutely notice. So I absolutely love what you're doing. And what I appreciate about you is like, inadvertently indirectly or indir indirectly um you definitely educated me uh because you know there's these horrible terms which are outdated arab middle eastern and right. i love what you've educated me and i want to give you space to uh, educate our listeners about what is what is the term that's much more inclusive yeah. about you know what what this part of the world looks like and what is the proper names today Sure. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of Muslims, I mean, Muslims span the, the, the globe. They are from Southeast Asia, South Asia. The majority, actually, 63% come from Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia and South Asia. So, um, and I think that's a common misconception. Everyone just kind of thinks that they're, everyone's just, you know, Muslims are just Arab, right? Um, and, you know, that couldn't be further from the truth. And then, you know, I think there's another misconception that we're new to America or new to North America, when in fact, we've been here for over 400 years and contributed to, um, you know, building this society in so many different ways. And so, that's kind of a common misconception when it comes to um, the Middle East, which is the common reference for a lot of people, we tend to shy away from the Middle East now because it's a colonial term, because if you think about it geographically, everywhere else in the world is kind of 
named after its geographic location in the planet, mm. except for the Middle East. The Middle East is named in relation to where it exists, where it exists in relation to Europe. And mm. think about how the colonial ramifications that are still very much institutionalized, not just in uh, the West, but of course in the Middle East as well. So we're trying to deconstruct and, and unpack that. And instead of calling it the Middle East, we now um, are trying to refer to it as Southwest Asia um, because that's actually geographically correct. And we can finally maybe uh, start to break down and shed these colonial constructs that have been left behind. Oh, thank you so much for that. And yeah, I know a lot of um, Muslims that are from Malaysia, you know, so <laughs> there's so many in different parts of the world. That's 100% correct. And I love what you also taught me, right? It's like Southwest Asia and also North African, uh, because there's, a, I mean, gosh, the amount of Muslims that are in that area as well, um, and all throughout Africa as well. So trying to be as inclusive and also, like you said, I love that decolonizing these terms. Exactly. exactly. I love it. I am looking forward to our conversation about this lovely, lovely person that you're going to be speaking about that I think you would want to have a movie made about this person. And I am so excited. So tell us more. Who is the person you chose to talk about for our episode today? Yeah, so the person that I chose, her name is Fatima. I'm going to tell you her whole name. Uh, her name is Fatima bint Muhammad al Fahiriya. And she was born in 800 AD in present day, in what's known as present day Tunisia. Mm. And she later immigrated to Morocco. Um, and it, she is super, super fascinating and, and interesting to me because she is actually known to be the first, the woman, not the first woman, the first person to found a university in the world and um, in the world in, in the, the world, world. In the yeah. entire world <laughs> and you know I didn't personally know about her until last year I, I stumbled upon this this story of her and I was very 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 shocked to learn that in all of my studies and all of my understanding yeah. of you know, how we came to be in modern society, I never had learned that not only was there a, the, a university founded by a woman, but founded by a Muslim woman was so shocking. And what's, what's incredible is the university is called the University of El Kurowayan, and it still exists today, oh which is gosh. so incredible. <laughs> it's still standing wow. today. And it, according to UNESCO and the Guinness Book of World Records, um, El Kuroyen is the oldest university or oldest continually operating higher learning institution in the world. Oh my gosh. And is it in Morocco or in Tunisia? It's in Morocco. It's in Fez, Morocco. Oh, no way. Oh my gosh. So you got my heart beating because I was just looking at Fez. Um, so prior to COVID. I was going to, I was going to actually go to Morocco and Egypt in 2020. So I cannot wait to get to Fez. Yeah. <laughs> like, get me there now. That is, and I love that, right? Like uh, continuously educating for how, I mean, how many centuries and I'm with you. Like I, as I indulge in all these um, research, it mm. actually makes me upset. I don't know how your reactions are. Um, mm. I, I get, I get mad and then I get sad that that they're lost from our culture and because i know that if my family or the my circles knew these names i would have been learning about them when right. i was little it would, they would have been household names right right yeah no and and i mean just think about the the number of individuals that we don't know that have great modern society right that have contributed in so many incredible ways and you know i think I'm, I'm a little biased in that you know i can i can speak from my perspective but i know that this is true for almost every every other uh, people of the global majority um when it comes to what we're taught in you mm -hmm. know in Western schools, mm -hmm. um 
there is this understanding that um, a lot of our contributions kind of got watered down with the Renaissance. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of that came through the East from, you know, anything that came from East Asia, South Asia, and, and, and Swana or the yeah. South, Southwest Asia um, came into Europe um, right after the Dark Ages and was kind of watered down through the Renaissance. And, you know, what we know is that a lot of that information um, was taken from Arabic script, transcribed back into Latin or Greek. And then, you know, the attribution gets completely lost. So at the height of the Islamic empire, we were um, contributing very heavily to the fields of astronomy and mathematics and philosophy. Yes. Yes. Took took mathematics and uh, astronomy, you know, to new heights. But because that information was taken from Arabic or Persian, Farsi, or other uh, languages and translated into um, European languages, that intermediary phase where so much was built upon ancient Greek and Roman texts uh, was lost. And so we, we lost like a huge part of history because um, it was just watered down. So. Let's bring them back, Serena. We need to bring them back. That's yeah. why we're these conversations. And for our listeners, uh, Serena said, uh, Swanee, that's Southwest Asian and North African. Mm-hmm. So, gosh, I know. So we were talking before we started recording, you know, when you have these historical figures, especially somebody born in 800 AD, we have to kind of figure out who they were because they're not always readily available, like in wiki, their early life and where they live. Like, it's not as filled out. But I am so interested in uh, learning more of what you have been able to learn about Mm -hmm. Fatima. Yeah, so Fatima was what, from what I have learned about her, was the way she was able to establish the, the first university. And, and we have to like just sit, sit with that for a moment because women at the time uh, around the world were not uh, given the space to be educated. We're not given the space to read in a lot of contexts. But, you know, Fatima had taken it upon herself to learn and read and contribute to society in a much, much larger way. And the way she, she did this, was able to do this financially was an, a very, very set of unfortunate circumstances with her father and her husband actually passing away in close um, proximity to one another. And the, the, I wasn't able to really uncover what happened in those circumstances, how her father died, how her, her husband died. But what I do know is that they, they died within a few years of each other. Um, Fatima had a sister, her father had left her and her sister an inheritance Mm. and her husband also left her an inheritance. So instead of just kind of taking that money and living lavishly, Fatima decided that she was going to take the money that she got from her father and her husband and use it towards to to towards something good, um, and you know from what I've built up in my head and, and what I've been able to uncover is that she um, decided to to take the money and build um, a mosque and also this uh, university and the university would would be the first of its kind to, to it would teach religious things but it would also teach uh, linguistics. Um, Arabic linguistics. It would also teach um, other disciplines. And to this day, um, as far as my understanding, the university uh, does continue to teach um, in not only some of the same subjects, but in, in a similar structure and a similar setup in the, in the way that the, the students actually sit around the professor and the professor is actually engaging in, um, in a, almost like a Socratic mm-hmm. uh, uh, dialogue. Setting. Yeah. And, and I don't, necessarily want to say that they didn't you know the the curriculum has evolved of course over time but they still teach uh the linguistics they still teach certain um religious texts but they also teach a lot of non-religious texts non-religious subjects as well but the fact that she was able to take her inheritance and build out these two structures that are still standing today i mean if you go to these structures you can still kind of see the you could still some of the original uh, motifs, uh, architectural motifs 
um, and, and scripture. And it's just so incredible to say that not only was it a woman that established the world's first university, but it was a Muslim woman. That is counter to so many of the stereotypes and tropes that we hear about today. So, you know, and to think that, again, I didn't have much to go off of, but what I've built in my head about Fatima was that she was a strong woman. Mm -hmm. She had to have been a strong woman to kind of, to take on such a monumental task in a world where women were kind of just um, not given that the, the same space. But I think, you know, what I really, what I really value is that because her father and her husband, um, because of the way the Islamic law was established at the time, there in, in the, in the actual, uh, jurisprudence, women were allowed to have inheritance and were, it was actually part of the law that women were given inheritance. And this predates what was happening in Europe mm. where women were not given inheritance. Women right. were right. that uh, financial mobility. And to, to think that, you know, she was given that money and she, she took that money and was able to, to build out something so monumental. Now, there, there are speculations around um, women attending the university at the same time. From what I read, she actually would sit in on courses herself whether people liked it or not. <laughs> she <laughs> great. So I love that she attended the university herself. You know, she mm. took it upon herself to to educate herself. And I think that that's just it's just so gangster. You know, what I mean? it's just so yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's just so cool. Exactly. And again, I'm I'm just like no one told me about her. Like mm. let's give credit where credit is due. Yeah. And I totally Googled uh, Fatima after you told me about her. And I was just like, are you serious? Like, yeah. it's Googleable, but you got to know the name. Mm -hmm. And now I have this amazing name and I'm just like, wow. And I love the rich story you're telling me as well. You know, she wasn't able to um, do certain things. Like if these, unfortunately, these losses mm -hmm. had not occurred, Mm -hmm. uh, and because if she had a brother, especially an older brother, all right. that money would probably would have gone to the brother. But because there was no other way, actually, I'm yeah. speculating. I'm totally yeah. speculating. Yeah. No. So at the time, again, what what's fascinating, and and I'm only saying this to like dispel like uh, stereotypes of of you know of the time. In according to the jurisprudence of the time two thirds of the inheritance would go to the, mm. the male and then one third goes to the woman uh, or sorry, to the, to the female. So if she had a brother, he would have gotten two thirds and she would have still gotten a third. And I just find that so fascinating because again, in, in the European context at the same time, yeah, you're not given any inheritance. Right. Um, right. Uh, you yeah. got what your husband had for you. Yep. you know? yep. So I, I find that really fascinating. I did want to share something um, that I did read. So it, the construction at the time, of course, took years and years and years and sometimes decades um, to build out these beautiful monuments that we see today. And, and so what I find really interesting is that it took 18 years to construct uh, this mosque and the university and Fatima, oversaw and supervised the construction herself. Again, Love it. she was owning her space. Mm -hmm. She was exactly in opposition to a lot of the, the you know, um, stereotypes that we have today. So, uh, and, and a, a Tunisian historian, his name is Hassan Husni Abul Wahab, um, wrote a book about famous Tunisian women. Mm. And the way she was described um, in the text is this really beautiful quote. And if you don't mind, I'd love to, to share it. Please. She committed to not only using the land she had purchased, she dug deep into the land, unearthing yellow sand, plaster, and stone to use so as to not draw suspension from others for, for using too many resources. Mm. So she, you know, 
with very little, um, with very little understanding knew that she didn't want to, to take away from the resources of those around her. Her community was so pivotal to her, was so crucial. And so of course, educating them was top of mind, but even down to something as, as, as little as this construction of this, like she put thought into everything that she did and tried to be as resourceful as possible so that what she did construct didn't take away from anyone else's resources. And I think that that just speaks mm-hmm. all who yeah. she was a person, right? And, and right. what she believed. And it's just, it's so emblematic of, you know, I think what we aspire to do and be in today's world. And, you know, she was an environmentalist before she- Right, before the term. (laughs) (laughs) And I appreciate this. And I love this conversation because you're, you know, being able to like learning from you and you're challenging my stereotypes. So like, I just, I didn't know about the division of inheritance and now I know, and you're right, every, the history of it and the more power. And we don't, that's not the narrative today around Muslim women, you know? know like and and it happens because the media and everything perpetuates a certain stereotype unless you go in and do the work Mm -hmm. and so this is the unearthing literally as we're talking about what Fatima did it's the unearthing of the variety of uh, Muslim women Muslim people around the globe you know Mm -hmm. and I think that um, understanding that you know this wonderful person one of the world's literally one of the world's first formal educators is a Muslim woman. Like, yes, I want to hear this story. Yeah. And so you have been doing research, of course, into her. And it sounds like you also have a movie script that you are working on about her, right? <laughs> yes. So, you know, I found her story so captivating and her, just the, the way that she lived her life to be so captivating um, that I thought there should be a movie about her. Mm-hmm. Um, or a docu series, or a mini series, whatever it is. I think her story needs to be told, but needs to be told in all of its glory. I mean, she named the El Kroyan Mosque after immigrants from her city because she herself was mm. an immigrant. Does right. And just all of the these little details about her should be told in in a, in a tasteful um, way. And so I started to write a script, and I started to write a feature. Um, and I got about 30 pages in and, uh, you know, features of course need to be about 90, 90 mm-hmm. pages, right? I'm a third of the way in, but there you go. Um, yep. <laughs> got a little distracted and, uh, you know, I'm hoping that I can find someone to help me finish the script and take it home because I think it's a story that needs to be told. And even if it's not my script, um, I just feel like her story should be told and it's just, is everyone should know her name. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. She needs to be a household name. And, you know, it, again, as edu- we, we talk about education in so many different ways around the world. So why not about the woman who built the first university, you know, and, and all the work, literally she built it. And like, you look at Harvard in the United States mm-hmm. and it's named after somebody who donated books. I mean, that's, that, that's it, you know? It, and there was another man who mm-hmm. is mistaken on the Harvard campus as being John Harvard, but it's mm-hmm. not on the Harvard campus. It's not John Harvard, who is this famous, famous uh, man that's uh, sculpted there. John Harvard gave um, books to what we call Harvard University. And it's so like world renowned, but this, this university should be world renowned and it's been around like you said continuously running as a university and it was built by this wonderful woman with i mean who came from such um such a a heart i can only imagine a hard time in her life and she was able to take this and build something for the world that now we have you know 1200 plus years later that talk about a legacy definitely definitely absolutely amazing I, I definitely think that, um, you know, she she is kind of one of these unsung heroes of, of women in history that we need to be, uh, you know, told uh, about. And, and I feel like a lot of women who have established these kind of, these very impactful institutions, they're humble. And so they don't name these institutions after themselves. So we don't, we're not, you know, we're just not privy to it the same way that men would, you know, 
have institutions named after themselves. So there, there has to be so many more. Oh, absolutely. This is just the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering like the first professor and like who was teaching because teaching would have also come from the home as well versus a formal university. So who are they? Oh, incredible. This, uh, I absolutely love Fat Fatima and I want to, I would, I think honoring her is so important. And also this is a part of anybody who's considered themselves an educator. This is a part of history that they should absolutely be wanting more of. So right. I, I, I absolutely love this. I love uh, Fatima's story, not the sorrows, but her ability to take this, uh, this time in her life and yeah, just the legacy of this wonderful education in a part of the world that's stereotyped too much and right. really be able to show the variety and the education and everything that's there. It's absolutely incredible. It, it's just absolutely incredible. I am enthralled with this woman. I'm going to find out more about her as well. And what's interesting, we've kind of just briefly mentioned, right? She was immigrating in 800 AD. So okay. this idea of immigration is, is it's not new and it's been happening. And so I think there's a lot of learnings from there as well. Definitely, definitely. And what she had to bring, I mean, again, there's, there's always this stereotype of immigrants not belonging or being different or not contributing mm -hmm. or being away as opposed yes. to being, whereas she not only contributed, but she contributed in a very thoughtful way and in a way that wouldn't impact others around. So I, I feel, I feel like she's, she's definitely to have named the university after other immigrants, I mean, that that speaks in and of itself to her character. Of who she is. Yeah, right. I mean, we got an educator, a scholar, environmentalist, a social justice advocate, an immigrant, an immigrant advocate. Like, I mean, the list just goes on and on. And we've only been talking about her for like maybe 30 minutes. Yeah. So <laughs> that's it, it, she's absolutely incredible. I am so grateful that you shared a little bit about Fatima. And I, I definitely can't wait to see her story on the screen. I'm just thinking about how absolutely beautiful the cinematography and the costume design would be on a piece like this. You know, and that's and that's the thing when I was researching the script, I was just, I mean, and I and I was pulling up pictures of, of the university and I was just thinking through what the costuming would look mm -hmm. like. And, and not, not in a like, you know, in an orientalist kind of way. Instead, I was just, I was really researching. I mean, what were the garb materials they were wearing? Yeah. What yeah. were the colors they were wearing at the time? How did they get around? Um, and, and just trying to think through how they would communicate and, you know, to think that she was able to actually oversee the construction of a university in it, in that time, in a space where people think that there was so little, but she was able to build so much. Is right. just, it's just incredible. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is like removing those stereotypes about other parts of the world that aren't part of the traditional narrative in North America. You right. know, they were living their lives for a very long time before anybody came. Right. Uh, there, the spice trade was happening for so long and it wasn't just the Europeans that were doing it. So there were thriving communities, you know, yeah. there were monarchs, there were peasants, there were uh, immigrants, they were all there, the same people that we have today. So I right. think it's Incredible. This is a movie that pitches itself. Let's be real. Yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. And I appreciate, I feel like we could talk about this forever. Uh, but in the interest of time, we have introduced a wonderful person. I'm going to have you say Fatima's full name again. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. So her name is Fatima bint Muhammad al Fahiriya. And, um, but you can also find her as Fatima al Fahiri. Um, and so she, yes, and so she was born in 800 AD and uh, in present day uh, Tunisia and uh, immigrated to Fez, Morocco. And that's where her, um, you know, the second half of her story begins. Incredible. Thank you for sharing <laughs> part of Fatima's story. And so Serena, where can um, our listeners connect with you and the wonderful your work you're doing with Muslim casting and definitely bringing more authentic representation uh, to both, you know, both the U.S. and Canada in regards to authentic South African, Southwest Asian representation in all of our media? 
Yeah. So we have a website. So uh, you can go to muslimcasting.com. Um, and we also have Twitter, Instagram, and uh, recently TikTok. <laughs> oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all, all of those, uh, the handle for all of those is at Muslim Casting. And again, our goal is uh, to provide diverse talent to storytellers, to filmmakers, um, and just to kind of dispel this idea that we don't exist and that other actors can just be used um, interchangeably. And, and instead, we really want to champion uh, our our creative creatives in the industry. And so, you know, you can find us at our website or at any of our socials. And you're doing wonderful work and appreciate you, Serena, and everything that you're doing. Thank you for being here and sharing you with us and a little bit about the wonderful Fatima. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, Ashwani. I'm so happy to have been here. Thank you. Oh, thank you.